So the other day I went to that guy with the glasses to update my blog when I noticed a new face on the site. Must be from that new talent pickup they just did. Before clicking on it, I couldn't help but notice it was doing poorly in the ratings, but I clicked on it anyways just to see this. So why am I dressed up for this review? D um, uh, I, I give up. Why are you all dressed up? Because. Um, because why? I felt like it. You're welcome. Okay, I never asked you to dress up, dickweed. Besides, you're just wearing a vest. That's not really dressed up. You might as well be just wearing a tuxedo t-shirt. And to be just as dressed up. My god, is this meant to be funny? I honestly don't know. It's almost like when Commander Data is trying to emulate humor, but his positronic brain just can't quite get a handle on it. I mean, just listen to the pauses between each statement. So why am I dressed up for this review? You know, perhaps I'm being a bit harsh. Let's watch the guy's review. Yeah, uh, uh, ba basically he liked the movie. No form of depth. He even gave it an A rating. I wonder what his grading criteria is. I wouldn't so much call this a review, but a vlog. A vlog. One of the most standard form of video style since the dawn of the internet. And it appears that almost all of his so-called reviews, with very few exceptions, have been done in this style. I guess it's okay. I mean, it's not like it goes against one of only two rules to get accepted into that guy with the glasses. Oh, wait. All we have is just a few rules. One, you have to be over 18. Two, there has to be a little bit of production value. It can't just be you in front of your web camera talking. Hi, I'm just sitting here talking to a camera. <laughs> I'm sure someone out there is going to be like, well, there's a big difference between a webcam and a Nikon D5100. Oh, oh. You see, I probably would have been impressed if you said a Canon. I kid. But I believe the same basic principle applies. You could be using a RED for all I care, and you would still be just a guy sitting in a room talking to a camera. Don't get me wrong, most reviewers do have the element of just sitting down in front of a camera, but with that guy the glasses, there's usually more to it than just that. There's creative styles, charismatic, and unique personalities with much more work put into their content. But I'll touch on this more in a minute. One wonders, out of literally thousands of submissions, how did this guy get on that guy with the glass? Oh. Oh. Now it makes sense. I honestly think the biggest reason, if not the only one, for Mr. Stuckman's joining of the site is because he has a fan base. Even one of the statements by Robert Walker says that he was chosen because he amassed a number of fans. Now I'm just going to throw this out there, but I don't believe merely having a fan base automatically makes something good. Rob also states that another factor that led to him getting onto the site was that he had great resolution and his color and exposure was well balanced. Which, as we all know, reviews can't be good if they have poor picture quality. I'm sorry, but just because his videos are in 1080p doesn't make them any less generic. Rob also states that his set dressing is awesome. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is personal taste. I'm not saying Rob is wrong for thinking this, but in my opinion, the set dressing, in combination with the lighting and exposure, looks cluttered and messy. It's like pop culture just vomited all over his walls. To me, it's not aesthetically pleasing, and it looks like it's just there to say, hey, look how nerdy I am. Love me. Rob continues. He says he's engaging and interesting to watch. I have to disagree. Stuckman comes off as really wooden and awkward, and what he has to say in a majority of his videos is generally shallow, a limitation to his style of review. I was so bored by Chris Stuckman's personality while watching his videos that I kept on getting distracted by his nausea-inducing background. He himself seems bored. In almost all of his videos, it seems like he takes no interest in what he's saying, with the exception of his Explained series and his egocentric thoughts on criticism video. Lastly, Rob says that Chris has a keen sense of editing. Now my research for this video was not limited to Chris Duckman's reviews. I have seen a great deal of his work and I have to say his editing style is lackluster to say the least. As far as his reviews go, he simply edits out his flubbed lines and adds a few Ken Burton images. Not to carry a point, just to simply exist. Now to back up my opinion, I sought out to make a Chris Duckman style review which ultimately wasn't that hard considering it was the style that I used to do my own reviews in, I knew that it would only take about 10 to 25 minutes at most. I attempted to document this in real time. However, because I was running so many programs all at once, 
The standard rendering process took 50 minutes. I should have known better to run screen recording software while using Final Cut, a software that's notorious for using a ton of RAM. Despite that hiccup, I think it's obvious in this video that this review style is very simplistic. If you'd like to see them for yourself, they are located in the annotations right here. Surely he's at least honest in his videos, right? I mean, his opinion is what attracts the fans. The image quality of the Blu-ray is actually very good. It's never been opened. How does he know what the picture quality is? Well, let's shoot on down to the comment section. Well, at least someone asked how does he know what the picture quality looks like when it's still sealed. To which Stuckman replies with, Well, you see, when a film critic gets press kits, he's given access to clips and images and much more about the film for his review including look at the Blu-ray quality. First of all, they usually don't send you press kits for Blu-rays. And when they do, they usually just send images or links to put in the description of your videos. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say that they did give him video. They would have sent it in 480i, which is significantly lower than any standard Blu-ray. It would make any of his comments on the picture quality based on that said video totally irrelevant. In a bio on Stuckman's former community website, he states that he had directed over 200 short films and a handful of feature-length films. Firstly, how do you not know how many feature-length films you've made? I mean, I would obviously take more pride in a feature-length movie than a hundred or so short films. It's just odd. Plus, I've scoured the internet for these short films. I've even seen a bunch of videos from Stuckman's former deleted channel. And I have to say there's no evidence of him ever directing any feature-length movies. He has a few short films spread out all over the place, some of which are labeled short films and technically aren't. I even asked what the names of these supposed feature films were, and I've yet to receive a reply. In his latest short film, Julia, which is the most original thing I've seen since HowardCantor.com, he states he was unable to complete the film due to a lack of budget and camera equipment. That's a very odd limitation for someone who's made a handful of feature films. He also says that he was not happy with the finished film, which I don't blame him. I wouldn't be happy with such a pretentious piece of plagiarism as well. Perhaps there was a miscommunication on the site. That's possible, but it's odd that Chris never corrected them. Because I've worked on this site myself, I know that you tell them what you want in your bio. It just seems really sketchy if you ask me. Before I wrap this up, I want to say this is not a personal attack on Chris Stuckman, but I know someone out there is going to take offense to my opinion and claim that I'm just an idiot who's jealous of someone bigger than me. And I think it's necessary to point out that Stuckman is not above complaining about YouTubers himself. He dedicated a 7 minute long video bashing Von Fry. Now I'm not defending Fry's actions, I just think it's funny how Stuckman uses clips of Fry that are clearly satirical to say that Von Fry is a big meanie face. And the number one reason why I'm not a YouTube partner, way too good looking. This is why we don't like Von, or at least one of the reasons. I'm not lengthening this shot, he really keeps it on for that long. Come on, that's clearly meant to be a joke. I'm just voicing my opinion on the internet as thousands of people do every day. And yes, I was sarcastic in this video, but that's just who I am. I tackle everything with a humorous perspective. And success or fail, that's what I tried to do here. Though it was explained to me by Rob Walker, it still baffles me that people who put their heart and soul and countless hours worth of editing into their videos are just overlooked and ignored for a guy whose reviews are simply generic. To me, this comes across as a popularity contest under the illusion of fairness. Needs Morgue was just introduced into the site, and though he does sit in a chair and talk into a camera, he has energy, personality, and seems genuinely interested in his topic. This is what we, or should I say I, want from that guy with the glasses. Not this. I'm not going to have a childish boycott against that guy with the glasses despite this latest edition. I am and always will be a loyal viewer. There's a lot to love on the site, and there still is almost a childlike glee when one of my favorite reviewers uploads a video. Just because Stuckman is on the site doesn't mean I'm required to watch every video he makes. I didn't like them before, and even though he has acquired better equipment to make his videos, I still find them fundamentally flawed, and I will continue to not watch them for the foreseeable future. I'm Joey Hollywood, and those are my thoughts on Chris Stuckman joining that guy with the glasses. I hereby leave you with a lost Stuckman classic. To describe my experience of seeing this film, I thought I'd use some of my rip rap skills. Cause for me to just say I saw the last song, that's about as gay as I do in a thong.
song, so I'm gonna do this in an entertaining way to reduce the fact that you think I'm gay. 